Hi students and welcome to HSC Chemistry and this is the topic on industrial chemistry. Today we're going to be looking at uh, galvanic cells and electrolytic cells and we're doing this in the context of production of sodium hydroxide. And it's the fourth section of the industrial chemistry topic. So firstly we need to just review galvanic cells. Galvanic cells or uh, particular type of electrochemical cell um, is uh, a cell which consists of two half cells, one of which represents an oxidation reaction and one a reduction. When we connect these two half cells together via uh, an electrical um, circuit, external electrical circuit, and also by an internal salt bridge, we can produce an electric potential difference or a voltage across those two electrodes. One of those electrodes where the oxidation is occurring will be the anode and the other one will be the cathode and that is where reduction is occurring. And in a galvanic cell we take chemical energy and we use it to produce electrical energy. So in the simplest situation we just have our salt bridge, our two electrodes and our power supply running between these two and then each of these is in their own solution. Now an electrolytic cell is the reverse of a galvanic cell. In an electrolytic cell, we still have two half cells. We still have an oxidation and a reduction occurring. But in this case, it's the application of an electric potential. It's the application of a voltage to a pair of half cells that can induce a chemical reaction. So this is the reverse of what happens for a galvanic cell. In this case, electrical energy is actually being used as the input and chemical energy or a chemical reaction is the output. And this process was first described and used uh, successfully by Michael Faraday. This process is very useful for um, the production of metals from ores, uh, particularly those that are quite reactive. For an electrolytic cell to work, the external voltage must be sufficiently high enough in order to overcome the natural direction of electron flow. The reason the electrolytic cell works is because the reaction is not spontaneous. That is, the E0 value is a negative. And because it's a negative, that means the reaction is not spontaneous and will not proceed. That means we need to put energy into the system if we're going to get the chemicals to react with one another. This is the principle behind rechargeable batteries. Batteries that can have their chemicals rebuilt by putting the electric charge back through them. Often because of the non-spontaneous nature of uh, the reaction, we can have the electrolytic cell sitting in a single container. And this is uh, much more useful than having to separate into two separate beakers and connect salt bridges and things. It also means that we can have a common electrolyte. In many electrolytic cells, there is also a membrane which separates the two half cells, but still allows the migration of ions. And this allows ions to move from one cell to the other through the membrane whilst protecting too much movement of others so that there's not complete mixing of the solutions, particularly as the reaction proceeds. The electrodes that are used in an electrolytic cell are usually inert, often made of graphite or uh, platinum, so they are not participants in the reaction. One of the most important things that you can do is to compare galvanic and electrolytic cells. The important thing is that both cells have reduction occurring at the cathode and oxidation occurring at the anode. These um, general principles that red cat and anox um, little ways of remembering this are always going to hold true irrespective of which cell we're talking about. However, because oxidation occurs at the anode, the anode has a negative charge and those electrons are going to be run towards the cathode, which has a positive charge. Because the anode is negative, anions will be pushed away from it. So they'll be carrying charge away from the anode. And the um, cathode is positively charged, and so therefore it will repel uh, the cations, positively charged cations, which will carry charge away. The electrons flow through the external circuit from the anode to the cathode. So this is the direction of flow for a galvanic cell. 
Compare that with an electrolytic cell. The cathode has a negative charge and the anode has a positive charge. And this is because this time we're actually pushing the electrons in. Okay? In order to make these reactions occur, we actually have to reverse the direction of the current flow. And because we're reversing the direction of the current flow, we also have to reverse the sign. However, we still have oxidation occurring at the anode and reduction occurring at the cathode. Because the anion is now positively charged, it is going uh, because the anode is now positively charged, it's going to attract anions and they will move towards the anode. And in fact, this system set up by um, Faraday was how anodes and cathodes got their name, the relationship between the anode and the anion and the cathode and the cation that we see in an electrolytic cell. In the external circuit, the electrons are now flowing from the anode to the cathode. But again, this is um, a consequence of looking at the circuit from a slightly different perspective, because this time we're using um, electrical energy to push into our cell and to get this reaction to occur. In the next couple of videos, we'll actually have a look at how the application of electrolytic cells has been used in the production of sodium hydroxide. Thanks for watching.